And welcome to Wednesday night Bible study here at Expedition Church of the Triad. We are so glad you're here and getting to hear this twice. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. We just, you just get that radio voice going. There we go. Um, maybe we got it right this time. All right. Yep. Okay. So I, I always forget that until it starts talking to me, um, which tells you how, how, what the lag time is between going out and coming back. You get to find out, oh, there's a little bit of lag time there. So just think about that. When you're watching the next hockey game or football game, you actually saw something that happened a few seconds before. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't just happen, you know. Um, I've actually had it on the TV come in at a different speed than on the phone. Like if I'm watching the so hockey game and I'm like going from room to room and I got it on the phone and on the TV, you might be watching on TV and then go to another room and then you hear another room. And they scored! And then about three seconds later on your phone. And they scored! I kind of took the fun out of it. <clears throat> All right. Let's get in here. Because this is going to be our Thanksgiving message, kind of, for Wednesday night. Um, one of the most, and welcome, and welcome, and welcome, hallelujah. One of the most important aspects of our lives is uh, one that comes under serious attack. Satan is constantly attempting to rob you of your heart of thanksgiving. When a person loses the heart of thanksgiving, um, they become cynical and selfish. Only what is in their interest is important to them. Uh, and it's a dangerous scenario. Thanksgiving helps us maintain a grateful heart and keeps us looking to the one who is our source. So we want to approach this blessed season with the purest of hearts, grateful to the Most High for all of us, all of his blessings he has bestowed upon us, and that in particular, the greatest gift of all, his son Jesus. How can we ever demonstrate an ungrateful heart after all he's done for us? And this is particularly in relationship to him, being ungrateful toward God. I mean, you know, you hear people, I'm mad at God. How dare you? I mean, I'm just like, how dare you? You know, and they think they sound so broad and intelligent and open that they could be mad at God. You idiot. You stupid idiot. It's like a dog biting the hand that feeds it. Hello. I don't have a lot of tolerance for it. You know, I'm angry with God. And that's based on one of two things. Stupidity or ignorance. Okay, you're just plain stupid. Or you're ignorant about who God is. Okay. And uh, we can fix the ignorant part, but you do know you can't fix stupid. That takes a miracle. All right. Um, how could you ever demonstrate an ungrateful heart after he's always done for you? Look, let's look at some scriptures from the Bible and uh, some things about Thanksgiving um, and our attitude, the heart, the heart attitude. Now, first of all, uh, in the Hebrew Bible, um, 32 times a particular word, uh, toda, T-O-D-H-A-H, -H, toda, it indicates words of thanks to God. It's one of the words we also, also use, we say well, it's one of the words for praise. But it's praise as an, as an attitude of thanksgiving, okay? Not just we worshiping God, it's, it's thanksgiving. You're grateful. Toda is to be thankful to God. Okay, you express words of thankfulness for how good he is, how wonderful he is. Amen. Um, it's a, it's a, it actually goes on to describe the, the terminology as a ritual act of thanksgiving, a religious song of thanksgiving, a Levitical choir, a verbal or a verbal confession of sin. Now, it is never used for expressing thanks to a human being. So to die is never. A, a word of thanks to another person, not this. This is a heart of 
absolute gratefulness for, for God being God and doing wonderful things for you. Okay? Um, formal expressions of thanks were made at the tabernacle and the temple. There was a thank offering. The Tadah was one of the fellowship offerings. Okay? Mentioned in Leviticus 7 and chapter 22. Along with the words of the thank offering, the worshiper was to bring food in the form of cakes of unleavened and leavened bread, unleavened wafers, cakes of fine flour, and meat. They would be eaten with the priest in the presence of the Lord, and all the meat was to be eaten on the day it was offered. So, it's, But Tadab was more than an offering. It was a song of praise. According to its uh, subscription who, uh, in Psalm 100, it was composed for the purpose of giving thanks. Amos 4.5, however, indicates that God was not always pleased with the Tadah because it could be offered by a sinful hypocrite who wanted to practice religion without repentance or righteousness. Okay? And it can refer to a Levitical choir. All right. So, there you go. Explanation from the Complete Biblical Library, he Hebrew English Dictionary, Sin Through Tall. All right. So, it is a part of our worship, of our religious, and, and don't mis misconstrue the word religious. Okay? I know we, you know we charismatic word of faith people really slam religious religion all the time. When your walk with the Lord becomes a religious practice but not a relationship, yeah. Okay? But there are aspects of our worship, aspects of the things that we do that are religion, but they don't have to be heartless or ungrounded. Or, what's that word? There's a word I'm looking for. Empty religion. In other words, just a practice. If, you're just, if it's just a practice, then it's vain. I guess that's what I'm after. If it's just a practice, it's vain. But they call us coming to church on Sundays being religious. Well, we come because that's what we do, but we're not, it's not an empty practice. They come because we want to. Not because I have to. I'm not going to go to hell if I don't show up Sunday. You might, but I won't. <laughs> I'm just joking there. Hallelujah. Of course you won't. Hallelujah. Um, so um, we, we can make religion religious. Well, we can make the word of faith religious. I remember back when I started getting on people because they, we don't use hymnals. Yes, you do. It's called a wall hymnal. It's up on the wall. Because it's not in your hand don't mean it's not a hymnal. Okay? Because we were so far out there beyond everybody else because we didn't use hymnals. We used back then overhead projectors with slides that we stuck up there. <laughs> you had an overhead projection person who had to have the, all the ones pulled before service and then stick it up there and then slide it up and down. And then when we got software, wow. <clears throat> took people's jobs away from them. <clears throat> they, couldn't, they couldn't run the overhead anymore. And in some cases, thank God. They, they were all there anyway. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? So, but being thank, so be, losing your thankfulness to God because of who He is, what He's done, Losing sight of how marvelous he's been to you. Uh, honestly, if being born again, and that's what I tried, I, I used to say back even in the earlier days of ministry when we were dealing with um, a lot of word of faith excesses, okay? You know, people would fall out with God, get mad with God because they didn't get an answer to prayer as fast as they thought they should. Or, you know, they didn't get the hundredfold return the next day or whatever. And I would, say, I would say this from the pulpit, and if you've with, been with us long enough, you've heard me say it. If God never does another thing for you the rest of your life, and you live out down here and get through this life somehow, some way, and you go to heaven, you've got something to be thankful for forever. And you have something to be thankful for every day if you're born again. All the others just benefits. It's gravy on the, it's gravy on the, ooh, gravy. On the turkey. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can see Nathan and Kat right now. Make, and Dennis may have to join the club. The gravy moat. 
They take mashed potatoes and go all the way around the plate. Then put the turkey and the stuffing in there and just ladle gravy in there and have a moat full of gravy with all, with all that stuff in there and dip the rolls in it. And they just, they, I mean, they slurp it up. Does that sound good? You don't like gravy? Okay. Oh, okay, a lot of gravy. I was going to say, Shannon, lay hands on him and cast that out of him. Now, here's the thing. When Cap showed up here, he didn't like gravy. He's from Oklahoma. He didn't like gravy. He, we, it took us, we had to beg him and finally got him to eat it. Now he won't quit. Okay. Save some for the rest of us. Okay. Um, but all the other things are blessed. So we have something to be thankful for always. And first and foremost, I remember Brother Hagen um, sharing a story about a woman that came to the house and, you know, woke him up. He got he barely got out of bed, got a bathroom on to answer the door because you know back you know back in that day when you showed up at the pastor's house, you better answer the door because it, it was some emergency. They come knocking on the door, or it wasn't an emergency. And people just showed up at the pastor's house because he's supposed to be there for, to wait to hear him what they had to say. Side journey. We first moved to Greensboro. And these people in the church, we're at home at 10 o'clock at night, about a month of being in Greensboro. The door gets knocked on. We go to the door, and there's about 10 people from the church out there wanting to come in. I'm in my pajamas. They come in. They just want to sit down and talk. I'm thinking... What do you do? I mean, we just we just got here, and you know, I mean, we eventually had to say, "Look, guys, just don't show up at the house just to come in and talk." I mean, my wife is, you know, she's in her pajamas. You know, the baby trying to get the baby down. Jesse was uh, just a year old. It took miracles to get her asleep. Three bottles of milk. Shannon, on the other hand, you'd find her somewhere in some corner in the house asleep. Where's Shannon going looking for? She's over here in this corner asleep. All right. Um, but yeah, knocked on the door. So anyway, this, for early in the morning, Brother Hank goes to the door and the woman comes in and says, he said, what's wrong? She said, well, I don't feel saved. He's thinking, I don't feel saved either. You know, woke me up, got me out of a good sleep, had to come answer the door, and you come to tell me you don't feel saved. And... Um, he said, well, you know, are you, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? Yeah. Do you, do you believe God raised him from the dead? Yeah. You confess him as Lord? Yeah, then you're saved. Yeah, but I don't feel like it. She said, what do you do? He said, well, I don't feel like it either. <clears throat> she said, well, what do you do? He said, well, let me show you. He said, now, Lord Jesus, I thank you that I'm born again, that I've passed from death unto life, the nature of the Father indwells me. You, you took me as, as, as lost, but now I'm found, and began to praise God, you know. And he said he got over there, got doing that, and all of a sudden, uh, he hit a gusher. And he went on for a little while and stopped. And said, now, do you see? She said, yeah. She said, you got over there, and all of a sudden, your whole countenance changed. He said, yeah, you know, I, I just started praising God, thanking God for what, he's, for what I have in him. He said, now you try it. And she did it, and she got about the same place, of kind of copying what he had done, and then she hit a gusher. See, we, if we have Thanksgiving, we won't have as many cynical, sarcastic days going on. Amen. You know, cynical about everything, you know. And, um, and you can be, anybody can be a cynic. Some, somebody asked, what are you going to do, what are we going to do now about these elections? You know, they didn't go to anything like we thought they were. I think the House just got declared for the Republican Party. So we have a split Congress, which means it can't just ram everything through anymore if that's over because of a split Congress. They, you know, just, you're just not going to be able to do it because you don't have, you know, they don't have control of both sides. Um, the Congress, the House can shut down basically anything the Senate wants to do. They, they, can, they can just stop, they can, they can kill it in appropriations and never make it. Okay. So, um, 
But they, you know, we didn't get the huge majority in the House that the Republicans thought. Didn't get the Senate like they thought they might have a really good shot, shot at. So what, what are we going to do? Were you going to be depressed for the next two years? Hello? Are you going to put all your bank, all your future on Trump? <laughs> Jerry, that look. <laughs> I know he's running again. Um, I'm not sure that's the best thing. You know, um, I, I really, I really don't know. Um, I, I know another Biden presidency wouldn't be good. I got that. I, I can figure that one out. I think I think anybody can. <clears throat> Should be able to. <clears throat> but what are we going to do? We're going to live depressed. I can't. We can't live depressed. We have to be believers who are thankful to God that every um, Jesse posted something today, I think, about, you know, believers overseas looking at America and, and kind of thinking what's wrong with them because they're living in communist countries. They're living in totalitarian things. They're living in dictatorships. And uh, they're still worshiping and thanking God. We're over here having mental breakdowns because you didn't get the Senate. Now. Am I happy with it? I'm not happy with how it went. I'm not, it doesn't thrill me. And, uh, you know, I do like the words Pelosi minority leader, much better than majority leader. Okay. Um, but, you know, that, that's my personal position on that. I'm not endorsing that to, you know, as, as the s spokesman of the church. That's Ed Taylor's personal thing. Although I could say the IRS comes to me and try to impose a Johnson Amendment and let's go to court because you'll lose. And, and they will lose. That's why they never enforced it. Um, however, are we going to live depressed? I mean, you, you can't jump out the window because somebody didn't win a, a Senate seat. There's, because God is still God. I said, God's, God has your six. The Holy Ghost is your re-reward. If you look it up and, and study, the, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is your re-reward. It basically means what they say in the Air Force or, or you know, in, in Navy pilots. He's got your six. Got your backside. He, he's covering the back. He's got you covered. Amen? So the Holy Ghost has your six. Well, praise God. And so we have to remain thankful. Now, so let's go over some of the, we're just going to read some verses. Psalm 26, 7 says that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving to die and tell of all thy wondrous works. See, if you'll get to talk about God's works instead of who won what election. Now, let me, let me, let me come right over here because I know some people think, well, you know, yes, we are American citizens. We have, you know, we, we should do right by our biblical understanding and God in that political arena. But we cannot fall out because it doesn't go the way we want it to go. Okay? Because God still does wondrous works. God did stuff for Israel under an evil Pharaoh. God did stuff for Israel when they had an evil king. God's done evil stuff, done stuff for us, for people all over the world when there were evil rulers and trying to wipe people out. <clears throat> God is God. Amen? Hallelujah. Psalm 50, 14. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. Well, the election didn't go the way I wanted it to go. I'm just, just going to fall. You can't fall out with God because it didn't go the way you wanted it to go. You still serve God. You still praise God. There's still a reason to thank God. Listen. If the government becomes so corrupt they take every Christian out and shoot them, you go to heaven. Now, I really don't want to go out that way, but if that were to happen, I'd be in heaven. I wouldn't have to worry about the next election. <laughs> Hello? Because we you know we just be gearing up for the Battle of Armageddon. And we know what's going to happen there. We win. Hello? We win that battle. We win it all. Hello. So remember that these momentary uh, events, 
Remember? What, what, is, what does the Bible say? That it, it, the, the, the light, this light affliction appears but for a moment? Okay? I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of how it's worded. Um, we we're going to find light affliction. Paul talked about all the stuff he was going through is light afflictions. Okay? For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So let's not get so consumed with earthly events we lose our heavenly mindedness. Now, we used to say, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. There's a lot of people who've gotten so earthly minded, they're no heavenly good. You know, they're, they're all about politics, and they're all about this, and all about that. And the world ends if they don't get the right candidate, and that, et cetera. Um, listen, we're still believers. God is still God. He's still on the throne. Jesus still makes intercession. The angels of God are still at work if you, won't, if you don't shut them down with your mouth. Amen. Um, Psalm 69, 30. I will praise the name of God with a song, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. You're depressed about the election? Turn the TV off. Turn the pundits off because they're already analyzing the Trump run and what's going to happen in the next two years. I don't care to listen to it for two years. I am so tired of, you know, my inbox is built. Probably thinking, Pastor, my server needs you know, three extra terabyte drives to handle your emails because you don't ever erase them. Because they come in so fast, I can't get rid of them fast enough. I've got tens of thousands. Are you shaking your head? of emails that are political that I didn't ask for. And I don't even know how to go in because there's emails in there I want to save it like archive, but I have no idea how to, how can I separate that and get that out and do that? You know, how, how would I filter that to save the ones that I might think were important enough to archive through tens of thousands of, you know, get rid of Joe. Joe's got to go. I mean, you know, whatever else. We're the bird behind. We need money. I mean, it takes me 30, 30 minutes to go through the emails to find something that was actually legitimate for the day. Oh, well. What am I going to do over the next two years? Because they're going to they be doing this for two years. And they'll be doing it right after that for the next two years. And the next two years. I can't even tell you. It bothers me to think how many billions of dollars are being spent on political races. It's an industry now. It alone is an industry. When we could be funding the gospel all over the world, we could be building churches. We could be doing other things besides, you know, sending this money to this place. Because if you don't send money to this political candidate, he's not going to win. And they still lost. Hello? Psalm 95, 2, let us come before his presence for thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Yeah, woo! Glory to God. See, if we get busy worshiping God, you won't have time to get consumed with being ungrateful that the election didn't go your way. Okay? Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. So the way that we're going, you know, the post-traumatic stress disorder of a lost election or one not going your way is to praise your way out of it. I mean, there are people right now who can't even function because they didn't like, they didn't like the way it went. Do doomsday has come. Do y'all not realize? Look, if you will. Gosh. Where is it? Anybody know right off where Paul's thorn is? Because I am so blank on it right now because it has nothing to do with my notes. I thought it was in, it was in one of the Corinthians. I just. Now, there's a lot of context to this, this passage of Scripture. 
Okay? Um, the, the Corinthians had been magnifying themselves and talking about how great they were and, you know, that they had such authority because they had, you know, whatever. And Paul starts with chapter 11. Would to God that you would bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. And then he goes on and talks about all the things he's gone through. Journeys and with nakedness and in weakness, da 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 da, -da. and um, really good chapter to study. Followed up by chapter twelve. It's, it, it is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about fourteen years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, or whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one was caught up into the third heaven. Okay, and. Um, and I also knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I would not be a fool, I should not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, the mess word messenger is what? Yeah, angel. Okay, it's an angel of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Now for this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. In other words, put up with it, Paul, that's just tough. That's not what he said. That's how we interpreted it. Okay. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities. Infirmities does not, actually, does, it's, its first translations are not sickness. It means weaknesses. Weaknesses. Okay. In my weaknesses. Weaknesses. That listen. I'm going to glory in the weakness, what, of my inability to deal with this in my own strength. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. <clears throat> because in that state of infirmity, in that state of weakness, the power of God comes on him. Therefore, I will take pleasure in weaknesses, in reproaches, and necessities, and persecutions, and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. He learned. Paul writes in another place, I believe over in um, Philippians. Well, it is Philippians, chapter 4. Uh, Weymouth translation, not Weymouth, um, 20th century New Testament. Paul writes there, Philippians 4, King James said, well, let's look over there. What's this got to do with Thanksgiving? Everything. Because if you learn how to be thankful, Philippians 4. Um, Paul writes down in oh, verse 11, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. Now, what Paul is saying here, he writes to Philippians, commends him that they sent money to his ministry. When other churches who had committed to do it didn't do it, they still sent their money. Even when they had need, they sent their money. And uh, he's, he's um, saying, you lacked opportunity, but I'm coming to you now. And he said, now, I'm not, telling, I'm not say, saying this because I need this because I've learned. What did you learn, Paul? That whatever state I am, therewith to be content. Now, the 20th century New Testament translate this, translates this phrase, that whatever state I am there with to be content, this way. I have learned to be independent of the circumstances. I have learned to be independent of the circumstances. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. And everywhere in all things I'm instructed about to be full and to be hungry, about to suffer need, and uh, to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now, another translation, I, and I... I, I lost the translate. I, I had it written in some notes one time and don't remember where I can't even find the notes. I, I'm, like, I'm so frustrated with myself because I, I quote it all the time. But one translation said it this way. It said, I've learned how to be abased and not lose my head. I've learned how to be 
uh, a bound and not lose my poise. No, I learned how to be a base and not lose my poise. I know how to bound and not lose my head. In other words, the circumstance of having way too much or not enough don't affect me. Why? Because I can do all things through the anointing and the anointed one who strengthens me. So what am I going to do? Paul said, I will rejoice. I'm going to thank God. He's not thanking God for the infirmity or the persecution or the necessity. He's thanking God. He's the answer out of it. He's the source of liberation from it. Amen. Hallelujah. So we enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. When our Psalm 107, 22 tells us to sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving, declare his works. Hallelujah. With rejoicing. That's one reason we don't have enough evangelism in the church, because we're not out talking about how good God is. We're talking about coming to our church, we're radical. Come to our church, wear skinny jeans and bedhead, and you're, I mean, got light show and fog machine. Have a, we rock and worship at our church. Really? Where's, where's the things, where is the transformative power of God that's taking place in your life being revealed to others? with our thanksgiving to God. Amen? Psalm 116, 17 says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Psalm 147, 7. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Thanksgiving, oh, ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. A, a, a word of thanksgiving. Be thankful to God. You can't sit around and thank God all day and then whine about everything at night. I ask, sometimes people get to wine and I say, you want some cheese? Because you obviously need some cheese to go with that wine you got going on there. Hello? So Isaiah 51. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like eating, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found there. Thanksgiving and the voice of, the, of, of medley. Amen. How many remember that old charismatic chorus we used to sing? <clears throat> Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord. Amen. We start singing. Yeah. We're the redeemed of the Lord. We come with rejoicing. We come with thanksgiving. We're coming up on Thanksgiving week. You ought to be thankful. Is Dallas playing on Thanksgiving Day? I'm going to have to really work on my Thanksgiving. I used to get so stinking fed up with the Cowboys and the uh, Redskins every Thanksgiving day. Like there wasn't another team on the planet. Like the Raiders who were winning Super Bowls under Madden. You would think there's only two teams in America. Even called one of America's team. That's, I tell you, we knew back then you couldn't trust the media. Now everybody, go on Amazon, look up the the uh, look up Cheesehead, and get Jerry some Cheesehead uh, gifts for Christmas. <laughs> the Packers just beat the Cowboys this week. <laughs> Jerry knows I love to pick on him about it. I do love to pick on him about it because I am I'm. I'm pretty close to the biggest anti-cowboy fan there is in America. <laughs> yep, and I know you're, wa you're walking in that forgiveness. <laughs> huh, it's a special grace. <laughs> then there, now we got stuck with the Panthers, but the owner I don't know his head from a hole in the ground. Anyway, <laughs> Jeremiah 30, 19. 
Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving. With the voice of them that make merry, I will multiply them, and they shall not be a few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. Amos 5, 4, 5. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven. Proclaim and publish the free offerings for this liketh you. O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord God. Jonah 2, 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4.15, for all things are for your sake, and the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 9.11, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Bill, have you got my notes? I mean, he's all over it like ugly on a monkey back there. He's getting up hard before I can hardly get the scripture out. <laughs> Philippians 4 6. Be thankful for nothing. If you got a uh, um, verbal stuff on there or something, are you, are you using artificial verbal? No. Okay. For Philippians 4 6. Be careful for nothing or be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Colossians 2, 7, root and build up in him and establish in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Colossians 4, 2, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Timothy 4, 3, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created, to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. 4-4. Four, four. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. Revelation 7-12. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. So you can see the Bible has a lot to say about thanking God. And your attitude will change. It will absolutely change if you'll focus on being thankful to God. That's why Paul said, I've learned to be independent of the circumstances. Because I'm going to tell you, life can ruin your day. It can absolutely ruin your day. You ever had those days? We, we've had some days uh, going to work. We had to stop and start laughing. It's like, what else could go wrong before I get to work? Don't answer that, anybody. Not the devil, I don't, want, I don't want the answer to that. You just had to start laughing. It just got humorous. You know? Um, We've had it on the way to church. Stop to get something to eat and it drip out and drip down the front of your shirt. And you're saying, well, how am I going to get that cleaned up before I get to the building and nobody, and, you know? Well, maybe they won't notice it. Pastor, what's that on your shirt? <laughs> well, that wasn't that idea. Amen. I mean, so we can get stressed. We can, we can, but. You know, and life can life can get you down. And I'm gonna tell you something. The enemy will pound and pound and pound and pound. He will buffet and buffet and buffet and buffet and buffet and come against you and come against you and come against you. One reason, turn the stupid news off. Just don't listen. Well, I like such and such, it's kind of conservative. Don't even listen to that. They'll depress you. Amen. Just go on and, and thank God. <coughs> Amen. <coughs> Pray. Seek the face of the Lord. We said this. The pumpkin with cream cheese was amazing. Are you, what are y'all eating back there? And it comes across my feed. I think it was probably pumpkin um, macarons. Macaroons with, with ice cream cheese icing on. I'm thinking, 
Well, why are you sending that across the family feed while I'm preaching? Yeah, they just said that's, oh, I said that's what it was. Okay. Now I'm, I'm now reading the uh, feed on the, of the church. Now, we have to live th in thanksgiving. We have to live thankful. We have to be you know, thankful to God because he's still God. You're going to wake up tomorrow and Joe, Bar Joe Biden will still be president and Ka Kamala Harris will still be vice president of the United States of America. And until January 20th or 4th, when's the, when are the um, congressional changeovers? They're earlier than the presidency. They're like on January the 4th or 5th or whatever. Nancy Pelosi is Speaker of the House. It's still there. Well, you can't just get into, oh, God, it's going to be the worst Christmas I ever had. Why? Are you born again? Is the life of God in you? Is Jesus Lord? Who supplies your need according to his riches and glory? Back? It ain't the government. God supplies my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Can you say amen? You're just going to have to, you're going to have to get up and be thankful to God. Well, gas is $25 a gallon and God has the cattle of a thousand hills. And one brother Higgins used to say, and the taters under him. <laughs> amen. He has all the answers. Can you say Amen. He has, the, he has a way to take care of you. He can supply your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And you need to be thankful to him. Hallelujah. Be thankful to him. Be thankful to him. Amen. Well, I'm not thankful that, that they're their president and whatever. Don't, I didn't say be thankful about who. I said be thankful to him. Because you, though you're being buffeted, though you're being assaulted, though you're being accosted, Jesus is Lord. And you're, you're an ambassador. You're passing through this life. And this light affliction is but for a moment. Uh, I'm not sure, but that word may be atomos. I'm not, really, I'm not sure right off, but that word particular word is atomos. Okay? An atomic second in the scheme of eternity. Hello? Well, it sure seems a lot longer than that because you ain't thanking God enough. You're not praising God enough. You're not lifting up your hands and saying, thank you, Jesus. You're my supplier, glory to God. I remember that Star Trek where um, uh, insurrection, where the, the, the planet, they had learned how to slow time down and all this kind of stuff. The people were 300 years old. They looked like they were 40, you know, and um, and, you know, they're, they're slowing time down. They're in this moment of just almost time standing still. How are you doing that? Just enjoy the moment. You can stretch time out to where it's not enjoyable by getting into lacking thanksgiving and making it seem like an eternity. Now, how many have ever gone somewhere you've never been before? Traveling. You know? And you turn the road, you turn on the road, and in your your map, or if you're <laughs> if you're old school, I still like maps. I still carry an atlas with me. I do. I like I, I like my atlas because you know if I put it on that stupid uh, Google, she might put me in the middle of a lake. <laughs> they have been known to do that to people. You know, turn right here in three hundred yards of your destination. That's the middle of a lake. Well, let's do it. It's what they said. Um, but, you know, you're going for the very first time, and, boy, it's the longest five miles you've ever seen in your life. How many miles? How far have we been? We were driving for 20 minutes. You haven't. But then come back, from the other, go back the other way when you leave, and boom. Okay? And all you're doing the whole time you're going the first time is complaining about it's taking so long to get there. As we go through the journey of life, let's go through with thanksgiving. Let's enjoy the journey. Now, there's a place up outside of, um, between Blowing Rock and Boone called Valley Cruise. And down there is the old mass, original mass general store. And it's, it's out there. It's an old 
old general store with a post office that's still working over 100 years old. They, you go walk into the general store, and there's little P.O. boxes up there with the counter where the guy puts the mail in them and stuff. And it, they still operate there. It is still an official post office. And um, it's a windy, curvy road that runs by a river that dumps into the Watauga right there at, on um, 105. And um, the first time we went down there, it's like, that is the longest ride. It's like three miles, four at the most. But you think you're never going to get there. Now, here's the problem. Because you're going down there and you're so caught up with how long it's taken to get there, you miss the, the beauty of the ride. Because you're riding beside a river the whole time. And then you get out to some open areas that are, that are uh, uh, you know, valley fields with the mountains going up you know, around it. Uh, green pastures, really pretty country out there. Now I don't even think about how long it takes. We're enjoying the countryside as we go now. You know? And, of course, waiting at the other end is the candy store with all this old candies and barrels. You know, you go by by the pound, get your bag, get your bag, go get it, and you go weigh them, and, okay, uh, $40, how much? <laughs> well, you were scooping, <laughs> you know, all that candy. Um, and then you get a glass bottle drink. At, you know, they got the old, I mean, an old, old-fashioned drink cooler. Let me get some cold. Hurt your teeth. Cold. And they got glass bottle Dr. Peppers and cheer wines and, you know, Cokes and 7-Ups and ginger ales in there made with pure cane sugar. Then they got ice cream out by the creek. But that whole little ride now, is, it's, it's just so pleasant because... You're not thinking about how long, you're just thinking about the journey. And our journey with God needs to be full of thanksgiving and appreciation and worship. Yeah, there's stuff going on in the world. Turn off the so-called prophets on your Facebook. They're going to overturn the election. Trump's going to be president. It's going to be stupid it's been two years and it hadn't happened yet and you're still saying it it's not going to they're, they're, it's not going they're not going to throw Biden out of office and put Trump in stop saying it you're living you're not even living you're, you're living in a nightmare y'all here you gone home all right I'm going to stop y'all y'all get anything out of that all right okay uh, let's take up our offering for tonight. This is Wednesday night offering. If you need an offering envelope, uh, they're on the back seat backs. I have now printed the master to take the down to a printer and get envelopes printed. I'm, I'm just tired of having to try to sit there at a computer and run them through one at the time. You know, I forget that. I'm going to get them printed. Cost more, but that's all right. Is, is that all right with y'all? Instead of fighting that bear all the time, save some money, not that much, not enough to make me. Uh, make Joe upset all the time. He just asked me for three months, well, you going to get some more envelopes? You're going to get some more envelopes? You're going to get some more envelopes? Pastor, we need some more envelopes. If you don't mind, we need some more envelopes. Now, Pastor, we need some envelopes. And he gets the same, and he gets the same answer back. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. I, I, I didn't have time. Because, you know, when he said, well, I sent you a message. Yeah, I saw it, but I didn't have time. Then I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. All right, sending it by electronic means, go ahead. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and give right now. Thank you, heaven's windows are open unto them, and you bless them abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Receive the in-house. Don't forget, those that are coming to help on Friday night, be here uh, at about 3 or whenever you can get here, okay? Um, I'm hoping we kind of have it really set up where the um, biggest thing we got to do is Fire up the deep fryer, batter the chicken, and throw it in there. Uh, and, you know, and for my guys, and we'll have our, our, um, our rhema meeting here. Glory to God. Listen, we love all of you. We appreciate you. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Um, have a blessed and thankful week going into Thanksgiving. And let's really, let's really concentrate on being thankful to God for all of his blessings. Amen? All right. And remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
God bless you. We love you. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad. Blessings to you.